Let's imagine that we're developing a conservation law by observations of certain kinds of motions. And let's imagine at this point that we have developed the idea of kinetic energy, that is energy of motion, that an object that is moving one half times its mass times the square of its speed is an amount of kinetic energy. And let's imagine we've also developed the idea of gravitational potential energy, that when you move objects away from the Earth, they gain in gravitational potential energy, the amount of which is the weight of the object times the height that you lift it. And of course, if you let the object go, that gravitational potential energy becomes kinetic energy. And our idea is, is that the sum of those two, the kinetic energy and the gravitational potential energy, the sum is a conserved quantity. The sum is the same beginning, during, and after a certain amount of motion. Now, if we throw the ball into the air like that, this seems to be a good um, principle. It does seem like the gravitational potential energy plus the kinetic energy is conserved because as you first release it, it's moving upward, it has motion, kinetic energy, but then as it moves upward, it slows down. As it slows down, it's losing kinetic energy, but at the same time, it's getting higher and higher, that is, the amount of gravitational potential energy is increasing. So that the sum of the two, the one that's decreasing plus the one that's increasing, uh, plausibly is conserved, a constant. Then when it turns around and comes back down, and that's gravitational potential energy, but as it speeds up, it gets more and more kinetic energy, even as it gets lower and loses gravitational potential. Plausibly, again, the sum of the two is a conserved quantity. So let's imagine that's an incipient little law of physics that we're trying to test, and we want to see if it's a general principle, see if it uh, works in more than just one circumstance, for example, the thrown ball. So let's do a little different experiment. Let's take the same ball, only let's bounce it. Now, if I bounce the ball, I start out by giving it gravitational potential. As it moves downward, it gains kinetic energy. Just before it hits, all that energy is now kinetic. And then, of course, something happens when it hits. But after it hits, it begins to come back up, leaves the table with kinetic energy. But the kinetic energy uh, decreases as it slows down, even as the gravitational potential energy is increasing. And it looks like you get about back to where you started, which would say that the gravitational potential energy and the kinetic energy, the sum of the two, is conserved. When you start here, you have a certain amount and when it reaches your hand again at the same height, it's all back there as if it were conserved. So, it looks like our little law is still working, conservation of kinetic and gravitational potential energy. But now let me do it with this ball. Now watch this. Oh! Somebody killed it. Look at that. Oh! It's dead. It started out with kinetic energy, or with the gravitational potential energy, then kinetic energy just before it hit, and then it's just at rest. And it appears that the energy has disappeared or been destroyed, is not conserved. Now that's one of the saddest things I've ever seen. So, oh, this, there, that's Friday. That's happy. That's Friday. That is Monday. That's sad. You could write a country western song about that. That's so sad. Now, with this one uh, experiment, this one experiment, we have shown that this incipient law, conservation of kinetic energy plus gravitational potential energy, this law that we thought was a good law of physics, in fact, is not. It has exceptions, and there's one that shows that it's not a general law. Now, at that point, you can either just give up the idea of trying to develop this idea of conservation of energy, or thinking of energy as a kind of stuff, you're going to have to account for where it went. If it's conserved, and if the energy goes somewhere, it has to leave some trace of its presence. It wouldn't be good enough to just say it disappeared. If you're going to try to conserve energy, 
you've got to account for where it went. And so we're going to introduce the idea of internal energy and play with the idea that possibly the energy that seems to have been lost in fact goes inside the matter, a kind of hidden energy internal to the matter, internal energy inside the matter. But if we're going to, uh, if the energy is going to be a real thing, the energy that goes into that matter has to leave some trace. A long time ago when I uh, first started college, I took a physics lab and we did an experiment that uh, I remember uh, because it worked. And a lot of the experiments we did didn't, but uh, in any case, this one was very, very simple. We got a, a cardboard mailing tube. Uh, somebody had sent the department a map. It was about this long, about that big around, and we sealed off one end with duct tape. And then we got some shotgun shells and removed the, uh, the tiny little BBs in the shotgun shells, the, the shot, and put about uh, an inch or so in the bottom of our tube. Then the person who was uh, telling us how to do this uh, asked us to, to make a measurement. And uh, it was a strange thing to do, but he said, uh, take a thermometer and put it into the shot and measure the temperature of the shot when you just stick it right down into the, the BBs. So we did that, and we got room temperature, which was no great uh, surprise. And they said, okay, put the thermometer aside, seal off the other end of the uh, mailing tube with the shot in the bottom, and then he asked us to do the following thing about 30 times. Take the tube, turn it over, and let the shot then fall. Now the shot behaves about like that ball. It doesn't bounce at all. But well, we did this about 30 times. And then uh, the exercise was take the thermometer again, stick it back in the BBs, and measure the temperature again. And lo and behold, the temperature of the BBs had risen by a couple of degrees. And it was this rise in temperature that uh, was a result of this lost energy. The energy that had gone into the shot, into the BBs, had revealed itself, the presence of that uh, energy inside the matter, by an increase in the temperature of the shot. So it's plausible then that we could resurrect this idea of conservation of energy but now it would have to be the conservation of kinetic energy plus gravitational potential energy plus internal energy.